Hi guys, I've been doing a lot of level layouts and collision related work lately. So I figured I'll record a quick tutorial on uh, generating collision geometry for your levels. So in here you can see I have just a very basic side scroller template and I have a platform that I made in Maya and uh, when I land on it I can run on it. And then I have this tunnel and uh, my character goes through. Uh, and the reason is there is no collision on it. Um, let's let's take a look at the platform first. So a geometry like this is very simple to generate collision for. If you open the asset itself and I enable the collision view, you can see right now it's got an automatic uh, convex uh, collision on it. If I just delete this and save, you'll see that my character is like starting to go to fall through the platform. And uh, collision geometry is uh, basically an invisible shell that wraps around your mesh and it tells Unreal Engine how uh, the player would interact with that particular mesh in terms of physics, in terms of walking on the mesh and so on and so forth. So to create a very basic collision, you can do it right in the Unreal. You can just uh, add a box simplified collision and it will add a box that you can you know, scale and kind of make it uh, align it to the geometry better. You can also press Ctrl W to duplicate that box and uh, try to wrap it uh, better around the mesh as well in here. And then once you're done, you press save. And if I press play, you can see it works fairly well. It's a very simple scenario and if you press Alt-C on the keyboard, you can actually preview the uh, collision and it's nice and simple. If you want something a little bit more uh, precise, you can go under collision and do auto convex collision, which will give you this dialog and if you press apply, it will create an automatic shell around your mesh. And this works fairly well for the most part. But there are different types of geometries, not just platforms. There's uh, oftentimes you will encounter something like this, which is a concave mesh uh, that is a, a tunnel shape. And with this, it's a little bit trickier to, to generate collision for. So if I open it up and you can see right now there's no collision on it. So let's do the auto con convex and just press apply. Uh, it will take some time. And you can see what it Unreal generated for us is not a, a really precise. It's it's very loose and uh, there is all sorts of uh, misalignments going on. So if I press play, uh, you'll see how a character is going to be walking on air and floating above the ground. And that's not what we want. Alternatively, you can uh, also crank up the settings to the max and generate a collision with max settings but it will take a lot, lot longer. And essentially Unreal will create a box around every face of your mesh. And that will take a long time and you shouldn't be doing, doing it this way. Uh, one quick way to create a collision for something like this is uh, under collision complexity, you can enable use complex collision as simple and what it will do, it will use this exact same mesh for the collision, uh, basically without you having to create one. So let's let's test that out. And it should should work. Yeah, and you can see it works fairly well. Uh, the feet are mostly on the ground, and when there is a change in the slope of the floor, you can see the capsule moving up and down, uh, the character moving up and down. So that's pretty good, but a lot of times, depending on your geometry, this method might not work for you. And if it doesn't, the way to fix this is by creating custom collision geometry inside of your 3D application. Most of the time, I actually prefer doing that because I have full control over how I want uh, my collision to work. So if you quickly jump uh, to my Maya, you can see I have my tunnel here. So let's import our platform. We'll start by generating a simple collider for the platform. And I'm gonna call it Geo Platform. 
the key thing here is understanding the difference between convex and concave. Convex is something that has parts that stick out. Concave has holes and you know like the uh, curvy areas that stick in. Um, in case of the convex mesh here, generating a collider would actually be fairly simple. If you want a custom collider, you can uh, grab this and um, I would probably simplify it a bit because right now it's got a lot of bevels and stuff which we don't necessarily want here. You can go ahead and you know merge all these to, to really optimize it. I'm not gonna bother. Uh, you get the idea. So basically all you need to do is make sure they're aligned and this is our render mesh and this is going to be our collider so what you need to do is add a prefix ucx which stands for custom collision and parent it to your geometry so now i have this guy that is a child of the our main mesh now if I grab them both and do file expert selected, platform, custom collision, I'm gonna bring it in. In here I will enable generate collision, I don't want materials or textures, import all. So, actually I'll just do this. There you go. So if you look at this geometry now, you can see it's not exactly what we wanted. Geometry doesn't align with what we, we've created in Maya. And the trick is if you search for UCX in your details panel, you'll see this one convex hull per UCX. Uh, you don't want this enabled, so just disable it and let's do reimport again. And now after importing, you can see it, uh, the collision aligns much better to our mesh. Uh, this is the basic workflow. But the thing is, it doesn't exactly work with this type of geometry. You can see if I duplicate this guy and call it UCX tunnel one, parent it. Okay, so I'm gonna import it like this with this guy. You can see the collision is uh, looks very weird and it's capped at the sides, which we don't want. And if I disable this and re-import, Unreal fails to process uh, the, the coll collision mesh and the mesh just comes out empty. There's nothing here. So why is this happening? Well, because it's a concave mesh, Unreal is struggling with concaves. So what we could do is create a, basically a box. And I'm gonna name it properly and here we're gonna reimport it you can see our box is here and uh, it's exactly where it, it's supposed to be and it looks fine but the problem with this is well our floor is not a box and if I start walking on this it's completely flat this really depends on what you want to accomplish if if you're making a first-person shooter game, uh, the the precision of the floor probably doesn't really matter much to you. But in in my case, I want I want the feet to be aligned with the floor fairly well. So I want a more precise collision. So what I'm gonna do is I'll grab these faces, I'll duplicate them, and this will split these faces into a separate mesh which is great and now I'm gonna extrude them give it some thickness and I'll keep faces together off it created this weird weird shape but what it'll let me do is I'll I'll split these guys apart and basically end up with a bunch of uh, boxes that are precisely aligned to the shape of my floor. So detach components, separate. Now we have boxes. Well, th they're not quite boxes yet. They do not have caps, which is fine. Let's do fill hole. This is great. Let's set 
normals to face and flip the normals, reverse them, so you can actually see our boxes. Unreal doesn't like when your UCX uh, collision geometry uh, overlaps and uh, you know uh, has, has those weird overlaps or have matching vertices. To eliminate these weird overlaps, what I'm gonna do is I'll combine all these together and then I'm just gonna select all faces and if you shift right click there's gonna be transform component. I'm making sure that uh, random is at zero, present transform face and now if you click on the scale icon, uh, scale gizmo, uh, it will change to scale and I can just gently scale it down. This way I have boxes that do not overlap and they have um, the angularity of my floor and will be very precise. Uh, this is a good start, but now what about the walls? Um, in my case, I don't care particularly about the walls and the ceiling. So what I can do is just create a bunch of uh, boxes that roughly wrap around the ceiling and the walls. Making sure they do not overlap as well. Okay, so now just uh, gonna merge these guys together. The reason I need to merge them is because the name must be consistent uh, and exactly the same with the name of the actual uh, render geometry. And uh, in Maya, whenever you duplicate something, objects can't have same name. They, they always need to be named differently. And because of that, it's impossible to have uh, two objects with the exact same uh, name. That's why I'm merging them together. And now if this is our geo or just tunnel one, this guy would be UCX tunnel. Oh, and things named properly and aligned. I'm gonna export them out. I'm gonna reimport it. And you can see we have our uh, lovely boxes and the floor and it all seems to work and there's no issues. So now if I go ahead and do a test, you can see our guys moving up and down uh, in the areas of the where the floor is bumpy and the collision on the ceiling still works fairly well. And this is a very uh, precise and manual approach to generating uh, collision geometry. It's a little bit tricky with all the different types of uh, meshes, convex versus concave, but once you get a hang of it, it works like a charm most of the time. And just to spice things up, let's do the same thing in Blender. Uh, now, I'm not a Blender user, uh, but I think I know what I'm doing, um, maybe, maybe not. I'm duplicating my original mesh and uh, deleting this the faces that I don't need. Uh, let's quickly do select the edges and do bevel, something like this, delete faces. And you can see now we have uh, a bunch of uh, faces that have spaces. Select all, E to extrude. Now I have a bunch of boxes. Okay, so with these boxes, this is gonna be our coll collision for the floor. This is gonna be our tunnel. So let's uh, flip normals. And I'll also set them to smooth. That's better. Uh, calling this guy UCX Tunnel 2. And now I'm selecting the coll collision, selecting the parent, pressing Ctrl P to parent. And now it looks like we've got it right, so let's export. Importing Blender Collision Test. Smoothing groups issue, not a big deal. Okay, so if you enable the collision and 
we need to disable UCX thing here. There. Okay, so with one convex hull per UCX disabled, you can see the collision is fairly precise and exactly the way we want it to be. And now let's, let's do a quick test. And it's working. You can see the approach is pretty much identical no matter what software you use. Uh, it's the matter of naming the asset properly and using the proper prefix. Alright guys, I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Cheers.